projections. Now, this is just a guesstimate. This is just what I figured might just happen. As of what I do is I take the balance in the workable accounts, which is the investment account and the main account, as of October 31st. Then I add to that any deposits since then. That comes to a million two fifty. Okay. Then you take out items, you subtract from that items that you expect will occur and some guesses. And you can see you went from a million two hundred and fifty. Is your thing on? To three hundred thousand dollars. So you can see how money just melts away like an ice cube in the sun. Which to me, as a finance guy, is scary. Okay. Now, a potential solution we may squeak by. You know, it may happen. You know, there may be nothing, no problems. That could happen. But on the other hand, way back in 1994, the town passed a Warren article, Article 17, mid-page, that says the town wants to be able to authorize tax anticipation notes. And, let's see, this is actually the law on it. So the authorization is there to do tax anticipation notes. So the town has the tool to keep from running into, you know, scary moments twice a year. Okay? Now, one of the th there, there's a couple of things that you have to do, <clears throat> or if you want to do it. One of them is, you're going to have to, if you do it this year, you have to, uh, you have to amend the MS 737, which is your official budget, in, in, in the book, okay, to allow for short-term interest. Now, oddly enough, in this thing, which everybody worked off of, there was a provision for it. But it didn't make it to the MS-737. I don't know why. You know, it was just a dollar. There is another problem that came up while I was talking with DRA, and that is, this is your official budget. And it says, principal, 79730 That's correct. But it wasn't all principal. It was actually partly interest and partly principal. So you've got to talk to either DRA or the auditor about how do you fix that. Or does it need to be fixed? It, but it came up during the conversation. Do you want the amounts on my little note? No, you can figure that out. Okay. Now, if you want to do it this year, you go before the budget committee and ask them to amend the budget by $1 for the TAM, the tax anticipation note. And it's been done before. Remember when Park Ridge Lane culvert blew out? And the selectman had to come to the budget committee and ask for an adjustment. And the budget committee signs off on it. And a letter gets sent to DRA's director, and they say, yeah, it's clearly a necessity. You've got to do it. Go ahead. You're allowed to modify. So that's how that's done now. If you want to do that for this year, you know, that's what you're going to have to do. For next year, you just make sure that the 737 has a dollar in it for short-term borrowings. Now... I've talked with DRA about this, I've talked to citizens about this, and I've got a call in to, unfortunately, we have to deal with the bond council, because Citizens Bank will deal with just people at the bond council. So I have a call in to um, 
Deloitte, not, not Deloitte and Touche, that's the auditing company. The ones we used for the bond last a couple of years ago. Divine Millimet. Divine, yeah, Divine Millimet. Do we cheat them how? Yeah, I said that out loud, didn't I? Um, and they're, they're trying, we're trying to, we're playing telephone tag right now. I'm just trying to find out. So there will be some expense to putting a TAN together. But based on how much I've earned so far, the town has earned so far in the investment account, I think we can afford it. But my What's big, the expense, approximately? Well, we, I, no, I don't know. No. That's, that's why that's I'm talking the to the Gavel Le Hurrier at Divine Millement. I'm going to try to get a better grasp on what it might cost. We may not need it for this year, in which case it's an exercise in academics, but I strongly recommend that we put it in place for next year and the years that follow. And I need to know from you, do you want me to pursue it or do you want me to drop it? So one question on your cash flow projection. This, yeah. this is through the end of the year. To, no. This projection is just to December 1st. You have three payrolls in here until 12-12. I know, but we expense the cost of the payroll before it actually occurs. Okay. Um, and any deposits from tax revenue it's not a good Isn't it? Okay. You know, it's it's going to be something. It's not going to be zero. Right. But Thursday we're going to have a snowstorm which could turn into a sleet storm which could run into a lot of payroll. We don't know. Something, you know, a vehicle could slide off the road and we've got to hire someone to come in and cover for that vehicle or pay to have it repaired. We don't know. These are the unknowns in the world that make me nervous. How low has our balance gone in the past? Every Bev Dion has come before the selectmen and said, you've got to slow down your spending, you're getting really close on your money, but she never proposed a TAN. Mm -hmm. But she did come in and say, you're getting close. Mm -hmm. And with a TAN, that anguish would go away. Is there is there such a thing as uh, I know a TAN is essentially a line of credit, but there's expenses. Will Citizens Bank extend us a line of credit? They, well, I, I asked them about that, and they said it is much more complicated, okay. in their opinion, than a TAN okay. because a TAN is very defined. This you can only use it for anticipated taxes. Period. You can't buy anything else with it. You can't circumvent bonding or other borrowing. It's just for that purpose. And we can have a pretty good rate on it if we take it, 3.36%. So one of the, we will start at seven. Sorry, we're just going to do this for a few minutes. I have the applications in here. My office is unlocked if you need to get in okay. there. And you can have to take my case. What does the tax bill do? I don't have mine yet. Just so you know. Did mine only came today. today. OK, it's probably my mail. OK, so what do they do? December 10th. Okay, so I'm not sure I understand what the concern is. Well, first of all, if you look back historically, people don't come in. Some people do come in and pay almost immediately. Mm -hmm. Okay. But other people tend to drag it out, especially if they're taking it out of like their home equity. Mm -hmm. The other concern is people are starting to realize that you can get a federal tax return benefit by deferring it into January. But Jim, you have to you get charged finance charge from us, yes. right? Yes, yeah. you would, but the finance charge is insignificant compared to what might be a tax savings. So the net cash of the 330, 303 is at the end of November? Is that what you said? Yes. Okay, so none of this here is pertaining to December. Because we're assuming that we're going to get a to cover December right. without this 10, or what are you calling it? Right? right? Okay, because of the tax, taxes coming in. Right. I think one thing.
thing we need to talk about, though, is we've been not, how shall I say, we haven't been paying the school district when they want it, which is on the first of the month. Mm -hmm. So I didn't include that here. But if you take another 435000 out of 303, we're negative now. Mm -hmm. If nobody says anything to the school district and they don't change their, you know, they start getting upset about us paying in by the middle of the month, we should be okay. Well, you've been doing it all along, so what difference does it make? Well, they may decide suddenly they want you to adhere to the letter of the law. But if we don't have the cash, then we can't do it. I really don't think it's a good idea to go to the bear. I'm not going to the bear. I'm just saying, if they don't ask for it, we continue to do what we do. Okay. If we, if they do we ask will. for it, we're saying we are at a cash flow problem, and mm -hmm. we will do it as soon as we can. But, I mean, if you've already, you pay... The school payment is in November, so we're talking about it's due 12-1, but you've been paying the 15th. So if you pay the 15th, we should have no problem based on the yes, taxes coming in. Okay. I agree. So and as you can that see, it's not included here. Well, yeah. Okay. yeah. No, I agree. But they're not, I mean, if we've been doing it all along, I don't see that that is going to be a problem. Times change, as you know. See, my feeling is... If we don't need it, we won't use the TAN. Mm -hmm. But if it gets to a point where there's a, uh, you won't make payroll, you want that TAN as a tool in your governance toolbox. But I don't know why we have to do it for this year. Why can't we just work on doing it for next year? It's, it's, That's fine. I, well, I, I mean, I don't, I don't see the... Urgency. And then I'll eat those words maybe someday. However, I... I understand being being able to have that, and I get that, and I and I don't know why they didn't do it. However, I don't see uh, all this getting getting it all done and getting it taken care of for for another month and a half. I if your taxes are due now, it takes two to three weeks to put the tan in position. Then we're then we're almost out of the year. I I understand that, but and and fine if if that's the sentiment that you want to go with, that's okay. But then we have to think about, let's put it in place for future time so we don't have to have this discussion in the future. Yeah. I think that makes total sense. Well, I mean, I'm not opposed to having that. Yeah. But I, I mean, if it's two or three weeks to get it in place, we're already going to be out of trouble because our taxes are due before that. Right. So I don't think we have to do it for 2018. We probably couldn't because of the time constraints. Right. But I'm saying to you, is this something you want for the future? Is this okay to proceed? Or should we just forget it because we've lucked out so far all these many years? I would what? like to know what the, I'm sorry, oh, what, okay. what, what the expense is. And it's a one-time expense. I don't know yet. No, I don't no, know. Like no, 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 it's recurring. Oh, okay. Because you, you have recurring? to keep renewing it. Every year. Yes. It's a recurring every year, not yes. monthly or whatever. Yeah. So... Um, I think I would like to know what it costs. Yes. I would like to know how much work is into getting it and, and how that I'm happens. I'm going to be doing it. You do, you do it all? Okay. Oh, yeah. So I definitely would like to know that. Yeah. I mean, the... and what's the disadvantage of having one? Except the costs. Well, do you know? do you what's know? the disadvantage? You've yeah. got to maintain it. What, what does that mean? You have to maintain it. That means somebody has to be on it so that it doesn't expire without anybody noticing it. So it's expense, and then if the burn is no longer treasurer, mm -hmm. we would need for the current treasurer to continue to maintain it or know that we are choosing to allow it to expire. Because you, it wouldn't, um, you wouldn't be able to do it until after March, right? Because that's when the authorization happens mm -hmm. for next year. You wouldn't use the tab until next May. When the the tax bills come no, I know, but to, to apply for one and, get, and do all the paperwork, you can't do it now for next sure. year, can you? Sure. Yeah. But when are you going to incur the expense? That's after the first of the year. Oh, okay. Okay. They'll um, they'll understand that. Okay. But how? So uh, um, how can you do it without it being approved? Well, next year. 
But if you look in the law, it says the treasurer has the authority to generate the note. So why are you having to see it? Because I, <coughs> because I want to involve you oh, in okay. it. All right. And I don't want to do something without you being aware that okay. suddenly you've got this maintenance issue for the town that you've got to deal with through time. You might also keep in mind that if you're going to do it and pay the bill in January, you might end up with a default budget. So just be aware of whatever the cost is going to be because that's going to, that's going to um, be in your legal line. Yeah. You know. I mean, there's some unbelievable cost, like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm just going to drop it. I don't know where it goes. But it should be relative. I mean, they must do this all the time. This must be cookie cutter stuff for them. Mm -hmm. They also have most of our information already, but you know, it would only need updating from the bond for mm -hmm. the last two years. It wouldn't be a from scratch, mm -hmm. right. which would make it easier too. Okay. Right. They're going to need this that says we have the authority to create one. Mm -hmm. um, that we have a cash range. flow that's close, mm -hmm. but we've got that already. Okay. So we need audit reports. We've got those. They're going to need signature pages and opinions and all that stuff that they do. Okay. Miles, you can sit. We're just um, finishing another meeting. So we're okay, comfortable. Miles, um, are you okay to defer it until we can have the full board yes. to make that decision? Yep. Um, and with Mike as well, you know, just to make sure. But it would be only for approving it for 2019, not 2018, correct? You're okay yep. with that as well? Okay. Okay. So. Okay. so, so Go with 2019. I don't. It's too late for 2019. I think it is. I think okay. by the time we need it, it we're going to be having tax money. I hope. Mm -hmm. So. Or or <laughs> we're going to have a very crisis-oriented meeting about what are we going to do. Yeah. Well. We hope that does not occur. Do we pay based on payment terms always, or do we pay early? How do how do we pay? Our, our invoices, essentially, our invoices. Essentially, it's, it's payment terms because for most organizations, once they get us the invoice and I get it approved through departments that they actually receive the item and they're satisfied and want it paid, mm -hmm. and it goes to the board if it needs going through the board or gets a PO and it goes through all of its process, mm -hmm. it's due. Mm -hmm. So the other side of it is you're, you're facing very minimal finance charges from a very few number of vendors um, most people don't even give us a finance charge if we were to be overdue a month, it would just roll over to the next month for some things. And not that we want to operate in that way, but no. payroll is the one, um, payroll and retirement are the things that are... Don't even think about deferring that. Right. Pay, no, no, that's not, what not payroll yeah. and retirement, yeah. but aside from payroll and retirement... Payroll... Retirement. But everything else could wait a week or two and be a week or two late, and it wouldn't yeah. be a hard thing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. So I certainly, I, I certainly think that we can get through if we're cautious about what, we're, what our numbers are. We can get through 2019. I'm willing to, as a full board, give some consideration for 19 and get it on whatever we have to do with Gallup or whatever we have to do to get that to happen. I, willing to listen and, and have a... The only really problem. outstanding issue at this point is how much is it going to cost us? I think we need to know that before we can make a decision. Right. And to make sure that it's... Yeah. Right. Yes. I mean, if it's $1,000 a year, it's a no-brainer, right? right. Yeah, uh, if it's $10,000. $10,000 is like... Yeah. The other thing, Bert, is that I think... Um, I have no access to this, like, running balance of the checking account. So I'm writing checks as people submit notes. I have my own QuickBooks balance, but I don't have access to real-time accurate bank account controls, account controls. I can deposit money, but I, you know, I don't have an online account. I can't look at balance. So I'm, I'm relying on you as you sign checks to say, hold these three. 
or something like that, or look at, you know, or tell me when you sign checks, this is the current balance, or something like so that. that. I can do that. Thank you. Because I need a way to know how much I should withhold, but somehow you and I need to work together to not mail out more money than we have. That's what I do all this day. Yeah, so, but I think that, I think you've got a good point, is that, don't. I don't just know. Paying what, I'm what just paying out, I, I, and we need well, to make more communication. Yeah. Your balance in QuickBooks should be very close to the bank balance. But you and I know it's not because of all of the checks. You gave me a list of checks that you don't know if oh, yeah. you know, voided or not voided or, or what have you, so that you know that we don't match. But I don't remember how much that. money. That's going to get well, I know, and so it is my goal, but it's, you know, I, I can't get to that right this minute because yeah. I'm preparing for audit in January. Yeah. So, you know, we, we will get to that, absolutely, but I can just tell you that I know that I don't have access to accurate information, so I, I rely on you for that. Uh, okay, well, if you need a, on a daily balance, I can give that to you. Or even just when you sign checks, like the total of this check run plus the daily balance, like oh, plus what I know that you know is the actual These equals things. whatever. Yes. yes. You know, yes. If yeah. you could communicate that to me every week, that would be. Yeah, I think. Once a week. Well, but because because once I write checks, I'm not writing checks again, and I don't need to know until the following week, oh. and then All whatever's right. cleared okay. is cleared, right. and whatever's been deposited has been deposited, and then we can talk again with the new batch of checks that right. I'm writing. See, no. in effect, what I do is I run a checkbook mm -hmm. without looking at QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. I look at the bank balance, I make my reconcilements, and adjust. Mm -hmm. and that's why your you got my uh, treasurer's report. Mm -hmm. It says pay attention to the book balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that was before we cut $21,000 worth of checks. So the book balance in the main account is now down to what would be down to like 28. Mm -hmm. Well, I moved a thousand dollars, a hundred thousand yeah. investment account. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't want to be that close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this this million two is the investment account plus. Plus this is everything. Main, everything. everything. It's, yeah. yeah. It's two, that anything that we can yeah. legally expend from. Yeah. Okay. So does, does that include the hydro reserves? No. The, all that stuff. Those are all restricted. <coughs> okay. I do have a question um, on the still date for fourteen thousand. Those are checks we can collect on. This is this is what I have in my system as previous year things that haven't cleared, and I can't just delete them because uh, it messes up previous year finance bills and stuff. Yeah. So oh, oh. you know, there are checks we've got money. Right? right, and for whatever no, reason they didn't clear, yeah. and we yeah. no, don't mind. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to suggest that you order a stamp from Staples or wherever that says valid after, no, invalid after 90 days yes. so that if they don't cash it and it doesn't reappear in our account, we don't care, we're clearing it from the account. Your checks don't have that on yet? Well, I don't, I don't know. You, you, that, that's all well and good, but we need to pass that by audit. By the auditor. Yeah, that's you know, I, I'm not it's sure. We need to make sure we audit it. Okay, very good. Probably should have yeah, so, okay. we're, we're good. We'll talk about it again at our next board we'll meeting and get my I'll opinion. I'll get you the and expense and send you uh, the expense yes. of the thing and then I'll, and the basic mechanics of it, and then I'll send you a memo. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, 2019.